Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to share 10 hidden Procreate features and shortcuts that I find useful and have sped up my workflow. Some of these are pretty simple and others are more advanced, but I hope there's something new here for everyone. Number one, selecting layers using the layer select shortcut. If you're working on a drawing with a lot of layers, it can become difficult to find the layer you want. For instance, in this drawing, I have several foreground layers and even more background layers. This is typical of how I work. I like to keep components separate so I can easily recolor, edit, or move them around. If I want to quickly go to a layer, let's say I want to erase this line here, instead of opening the layers panel and scrolling around, I can jump there directly using the layer select shortcut. You have to first enable it by going to settings, preferences, gesture controls, and then layer select. You can choose how you want to invoke it. I've chosen to use the square modify button plus the Apple Pencil. So now to jump to the line art layer, I use my left hand to hold down the modify button and tap it with my pencil. Procreate outlines the layer contents and when I lift the pencil, it tells me that that layer is now selected. And I can go ahead and fix this mistake. Sometimes there may be two or more overlapping layers, in which case Procreate will display a menu asking you to choose which layer you want to select. In this case, I want to edit the kite, so I'm going to select the top layer. Number two, painting and erasing with the same brush. I love this shortcut because it lets me quickly match my eraser style with my paintbrush style. Let's say I want to be able to erase some of this sky area, but I don't want to lose the texture I have in there. First, I'm going to go to this layer using the layer select shortcut that I just showed. Then I'm going to open the layers panel and isolate this layer by tapping and holding on the checkbox. My paintbrush is currently set to Procreate's default wash brush and my eraser is set to hard eraser. To make my eraser match my paintbrush, I want to first make sure I'm on the tool I want to copy from and then tap and hold on the eraser tool to make it match. And now I can come in here and refine this shape while retaining this nice soft edge. You can also do this in reverse and make your brush match the current eraser style. Just make sure you are on the tool you want to copy from when you invoke the shortcut, otherwise nothing will change. Number three, saving brush size. If you're doing a monoline drawing or a drawing where it's important to maintain a consistent line width, you can save your brush size so you don't forget it. To save the current brush size, I'm gonna tap on the brush slider in the sidebar here, and then tap the plus icon. This creates a little marker that I can easily go back to. You can save up to four sizes per brush. You can also save your opacity settings. Number four, pinning brushes. You can pin your frequently used brushes to the top of the recent section to easily access them. You can of course organize them into custom brush sets, but sometimes I just want a quick shortcut to a brush I'm using a lot without having to look through a list. I'm going to go back to my recent brushes. To pin a brush, just left swipe and select pin. The star indicates that it's now pinned and I'll stay at the top, followed by the other brushes you've used most recently. Number five, continue filling with color drop. A quick way to add flat color is to set your line art layer to reference, create a new layer underneath, and then just drag and drop your colors. And instead of making all these round trips, you can save a bit of time by tapping the continue filling option, and then all you have to do is tap on an area to fill it. Another way to speed things up, especially if you're coloring an intricate area, is to drag out your palette and place it near the area you're coloring. Now I can quickly fill without having to go back and forth. 
once you're done, just tap X to minimize it again. And to exit color drop mode, you can tap the check mark in the top bar. Number six, creating a palette from an image. Procreate comes with a few default color palettes and you can download or create your own. But if you want to quickly generate a palette based on a color scheme that you like, you can try this trick. First, I'm going to tap the plus icon and then choose create new palette from file. I previously saved this image of Starry Night, so I'm going to select it and then Procreate just auto-magically generates a color palette for me. And then from here, I can customize the palette, delete swatches I don't like, and add new ones. Number seven, adjusting the threshold. Sometimes when you fill an area, you may notice some gaps where the color doesn't quite meet the border. One way to fix this is to increase the fill threshold. So I'm gonna undo this, and this time when I color drop, I'm gonna hold my pencil down and scrub to the right. You'll see the threshold percentage in the top bar increase. And now if I continue filling, I no longer see any visible gaps. This also works when making selections. Let's say I wanna select part of this cat here, the first thing I'm going to do is turn off my reference layer since that will affect the selection. I also want to make sure I'm on the color layer. Now if I choose the selection tool, automatic, I can tap and scrub right or left to increase or decrease the selection area. Once I'm happy with the selection, I can recolor it or make any other adjustments. Number eight, multi-selecting layers. To quickly select multiple layers, tap on the first one and then right swipe to add to that selection. Now I can easily bulk delete these layers or group them and collapse them to get them out of the way. Number nine, previewing your artwork full screen. If you want to show your artwork to others or just preview them full screen, you can pinch outward on any image to go into preview mode and then swipe left or right to view the other images in that stack. Once you're done, you can pinch in to return to the primary view. Number 10, copying and moving layers to a different canvas. You can copy and move layers in one go, although it does require two hands. First, you want to select and then tap and hold the layers you want to move, dragging them out of the layers panel. Then with your other hand, tap on the gallery button and then select a canvas to drop the layers into. You'll notice that the layer order is inverted so I'm just going to reorder these. And there you have it. And lastly, I have a bonus tip for you. This last one isn't so much a Procreate feature as it is an iPad hack. If you want to transfer something from your iPad onto paper, like this pattern, you need to first lock the screen to prevent things from moving around. The easiest way to do this is to turn on an accessibility feature called Guided Access. You'll want to go to Settings, Accessibility, and then scroll down to Guided Access. I already have it turned on. The first time you turn it on, it will ask you to create a passcode, since this feature is often used as a parental control. Then you can go back to Procreate. Before you turn on Guided Access, you want to make sure that you've sized your artwork how you want it and turn the display brightness all the way up. To start, you want to triple click the top button and select guided access from the menu. The device lets me know it started and the screen is now frozen. I can go ahead and put my paper on top and trace away just being careful not to press too hard and damage my screen. Once you're done tracing, 
Exit guided access by triple clicking the top button again and entering your passcode. So those are my top 10 hidden Procreate features. I hope you found this video helpful and try out some of these shortcuts for yourself. Let me know which are your favorites and if you have any others you'd like to share. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.